All right. Uh, I think we're ready to go here. What's happening, everyone? Uh, it's good to uh, good to be doing this again. Uh, it's been a while, obviously, and um, yeah, I've just been uh, traveling around quite a bit, uh, staying in different places, doing a bit of camping. Uh, right now, I'm actually in this beautiful house in Stratford, Connecticut, uh, in the U.S., and I've been hanging out here, uh, watching after the house with this dog and um, hanging out on the beach, working on stuff. Uh, it's been great. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I guess I, I'm sorry I haven't done this in a little while. I've just kind of had a lot of, uh, a lot of projects I've been working on and um, a lot of things that have been occupying my attention for a while. So I'm hoping to do this a little bit more as well as getting out more uh, YouTube content and that kind of stuff to you guys. But um, anyway, for today, I was actually thinking of there's this um, art, sta art station challenge that I was checking out. And I actually haven't, haven't really, I haven't done one of these before. And I've thought about it a number of times and I thought uh, this could be a cool opportunity to, um, to dive into something like this. So I was thinking about putting together some kind of environment. I don't really know what the, uh, what the idea is yet, but feel free to drop any suggestions in the comments here. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to do a little bit of sketching here to get started. See if I can come up with some, uh, some ideas. Uh, meanwhile, if you are new here, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you are just coming back, uh, just uh, leave a leave a little note in the comments, say hi, and uh, you know, feel free to uh, drop any ideas. Some idea. All right, um, let me get my Wacom tablet connected here. I guess I have to have Bluetooth on for that. Because I forgot to uh, to cue up the music this time, but that's okay. We don't always have to. Actually, sometimes people will tell me that they. Um, they some people have requested that I don't have the, uh, the music on because they want to listen to their own music while while this is going on. So we'll see how that goes today. Usually, actually, the music is just for myself uh, to set a little mood for the uh, the process. But I think I will survive without it today. Welcome, Nick. Good to see you. Yeah, good to be back. Um, yeah, I was just saying that um, I've been uh, bouncing around the U.S. a little bit and um, doing some camping. And uh, right now I'm house sitting at this place in Connecticut. And um, uh, yeah, I've been trying out this sort of like digital artist nomad lifestyle, which has been really interesting. Um, and it's, it's a really exciting new possibility. Um, I think for a lot of people now that they're kind of working... Um, working remotely or working from home, I mean, you can live basically everywhere you, anywhere you want. And um, so, I mean, I don't really have any other obligations. Uh, and uh, where I was living was a little bit expensive, you know, for, for what I'm doing. So I've just been kind of uh, bopping around in my car and uh, checking out some cool places. I really have not done much traveling in my life. So I'm really hoping to do um, a lot more of this moving forward, check out some other countries. Um, maybe uh, meet some other artists. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm, I, sometimes I'm not even really sure what I'm going to be doing tomorrow or like where I'm going to be staying, uh, you know, that night when I wake up, but, um, it's really cool. I've been really enjoying it. <clears throat> What's up, uh, Eddie and Ernesto? Welcome. Welcome. Good to be back. Um, good to see you guys here. So yeah, I'm, um, not really, I guess I'm drawing on the background layer here, aren't I? I guess it doesn't matter too much. Maybe I will just, yeah, let's try this. Uh, copy, paste, set to uh, darken. That might work. And this one. can just image 
fail. Where is it? I can never find this. So yeah, I always use the the shift uh, F. What is it? Shift F two or something? Shift F five maybe for the fill. But on my MacBook, which is what I'm working on now, which is what I'm doing everything from uh, now, uh, that shortcut does not. There it is. Shortcut does not work uh, very well. Right, let's try that. This comes back on, and I think we can just move that around a bit. I was just sort of doodling there. Actually, you know what? Let's start over. So I'm 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 thinking I have this idea kind of forming in my head a little bit, um, you know, for this challenge because like creating an environment design for what's the theme? Uh, it's like when animals rule the world or something, right? So I actually don't have that much experience uh, drawing animals, uh, except for like, you know, reptiles and lizards and dragons and that kind of stuff. Um, and a little bit of horses. I was doing some horse practice a while ago, but I really need to uh, to brush up on that. Anyway, so I, I think I've, I'm kind of opting to do a bit more of an environment design here, but I want to kind of play off that theme a little bit. I've been thinking about doing something with eagles, like some kind of tower. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I was starting to sketch out a little bit here. Maybe some kind of like roost or, you know, sort of fortress up in the mountains and like have some really cool sort of dramatic, uh, perspective. Maybe have like a big eagle's head kind of up here. That would be kind of cool. Something like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, Nick, I'd love to see what you're you're working on for that. Um, I don't know if you have already, but you should uh, throw that up in the in the discord group there. Uh, I would love to do more of these, these challenges. Um, usually I have I have some other number of projects going on at the same time. So I can't really justify doing more of a, you know, a personal project like this, but this is kind of cool. This sort of reminds me of, um, what am I drawing this from? Like the, uh, the old Warcraft games or Warcraft three. I think that's what it was where it had some kind of building like this, where you could uh, create griffins or something like that. Yeah. And we can make this more more elaborate. Maybe it could be like a whole, whole fortress kind of thing. We could have some of them sort of flying around it. So this is something where, so by the way, I've been, I've been learning, um, yeah, as you may know, if you've been following my Instagram stuff a little bit recently, uh, I've been learning a lot of Blender, and I'm hoping to dive into that today um, and use that for for something in this image. And I'm really thinking of um, of do, using that for this tower. It would be a really great opportunity to kind of use that sort of accurate perspective and lighting and everything, and maybe even build a little bit of the <clears throat> excuse me of the the landscape around it as well. Uh, using using those same strategies, um, so I've I've actually been learning from Walid Fagali, which I think you know, you guys are all uh, familiar with already. I'm sure. Um, uh, I think you know a lot of you guys are from the, or I may have may have found you in the in the evident community. But um, so he he just released this course 3D for artists, um, and so I was sort of following along and learning from him as he was building the course. So um, that's really cool. You should check that out. Um, I'll drop a link in the description below. Um, pretty much pretty much uh, most of the stuff I know about Blender I've learned within, you know, the past uh, several months from from learning from him. So uh, that's been really cool. And it's been a really useful tool to have 
uh, at my disposal, and it's just super fun to work with. So um, I'm trying not to, you know, rely on it too much just for stuff like this. You know, like I really, of course, I encourage everyone to um, to keep working on their on their traditional, you know, sketching skills and stuff like this. Um, you know, to start out, but uh, it can be really useful if you really if you need to throw in some kind of uh, building or get some kind of perspective like this. Um, so that's I think that's what I'm gonna gonna attempt today. Now I have not tried uh, live streaming with with Blender yet, and I I did a little test earlier uh, to see how it would handle things. And this is this is not like a very advanced. Uh, Machine. I mean, it's. I've. I've really enjoyed using. This is a. Um, twenty. Twenty fifteen, I think, or twenty sixteen MacBook Pro. So it's not. Uh, new by any means, but. Um, it's. Uh, it's really. You know, it gets the job done for pretty much everything I need to do, including using Blender. Um, I just have not really tested that while also streaming through OBS, which does use up some CPU itself, but I don't think it'll be uh, too much of an issue. I did a little test earlier, like I said, and um, so we'll give it a whirl. And if it keeps crashing, of course, we can just jump back into Photoshop here. But I really have not had uh, many issues with, with Blender crashing on here or, or anything like that. At worst, it'll just kind of be a pretty slow uh, uh, render time, you know. But I don't, you know, we're not going to do anything really crazy or advanced. Uh, at, at most, we might even just sort of block it out pretty simply as I've done here. But maybe we could have one of them kind of hanging out on this rock here. <laughs> I'm really liking this idea, actually. Uh, welcome, Matt. Good to see you here. All right, maybe we can have some cool gate, something like that. Of course, as always, we want to have some really awesome epic clouds happening up here. I actually, um, if you saw my my other post recently, I've been doing a lot of experiments with actually making clouds with volumetrics in uh, in Blender, and that's been pretty cool. It comes in pretty handy if you want to create some kind of atmosphere like this, or or sort of create the impression that um, you know you're really really high up in the mountains somewhere. And of course, we've got our classic zigzag pathway maybe we can create some some stairs with this kind of sort of some uh, really kind of chunky rocky kind of things here Um, but you know this is uh, you know this is an important phase of the process to sort of set up the composition like this um, and just sort of mess around with stuff. I think maybe what the intent is for the challenge and for obviously for most um, actual you know concept artwork they would have you sort of whip up a few smaller thumbnail variations of this first, but since we're we're just doing a stream here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. We're just gonna come up with our best idea right now, and uh, and we'll make it happen. It'd be cool to have them kind of circling around up here. Something like that. Of 
Cool. Well, I think that's um, this is enough of a, a sketch to get started on. You know, maybe we can just sort of dive into Blender here and um, see if we can start modeling some of this stuff out. So yeah, it's looking like uh, it's running a little bit, a little bit slow here, but I think that should be fine. Uh, so let's start with our first, uh, you know, sort of the most important um, element in this piece, obviously, is this, this, um, actually, maybe we can just, just grab a screenshot of this and go into pure ref. Paste that in there. So we can look at this while we're working. Control or Shift Command A to put that on top. Of course, it's always hard to find a good spot for this, but anyway, yes, I'm starting with the cube here, or maybe um, I guess that's a bit more of a cylinder, isn't it? We could start with a cylinder. Let's try that. By the yeah, so anyway. I'm not like a, a blender master here or anything, but I've been using it quite a bit. Um, and, you know, you'll probably see me make uh, all kinds of mistakes here as far as the, the proper procedure for things. But um, I think it doesn't matter too much, you know, if we're just trying to get sort of a rough. Uh, representation of what we want here. So let's make this a little bigger. It's going to be interesting to try. I haven't really tried to model anything like that eagle's head yet, so um, you'll have to do a little bit of a little bit of thinking here. Okay, so let's create, um, let's do another cylinder. Actually, we can just duplicate this one. Let's sh sort of shrink it down vertically a bit. By the way, I know, um, I know Nick is, is doing some stuff in, in Blender. Uh, and I, I'm not sure about the rest of you guys. Um, I'm curious to to know if you've you've tried this out at all, or if, or if you're um, you have, and you were just like super discouraged, or uh, what your experience has been like. I'm sure this is not the proper way to do things but close enough. Should let's move this back like that. And can go into these. We duplicate this. Shrink it down. probably find a, a reference of an eagle as well while I'm doing this but again for the sake of uh, simplicity I'm just gonna wing it get it wing it I thought that was clever um, Nick is saying yes I'm on the path to learning it still not quite my first go go to thing but in some projects it really helps yeah absolutely Let's go back into edit mode. Let's do a little cut here. And let's grab this edge. 
bring it up like that. I guess we should also grab these. kind of reminding me of uh, like the uh, the AT SD from Star Wars all right and let's do this one more time rotate along the Y shrink that down Use Daz Studio, which is like using a character model. Yeah, I mean, actually, what I'm doing right now would probably be better. Uh, it would probably be easier to do as a, a sculpt. Um, I don't know if there's any point in me doing all this all this modeling work, but yeah, I'm not. I'm still pretty like generally unfamiliar with um, the you know, the sort of agreed upon procedure for all this, this stuff, but um, I guess, you know, I'm sure everyone kind of comes up with their own uh, workflow as well. I think this is a really, really weird way to do this. but perhaps not. All right, well, that's probably close enough to, uh, to handle a lot of this with a, a remesh. Um, Cool. We can see kind of can look at it from this perspective down here. Um, I think maybe what I'll do is just subdivide this and then take some of these points, bring them in. sort of smooth things out a little bit. Whoops. There we go. getting closer here to something that looks a little bit more organic. I'm starting to get a little bit asymmetrical here. I'm not sure why, but that may, let's see, that may become problematic later, but we'll see. 
maybe this just is not completely centered. I will. So before I screw things up too much, let's try this. Uh, let's join these together. And apply a remesh modifier. Look at that. Very eagle like. Um, that will probably be good enough for now. And so let's apply that. And then next thing I will do is go to wireframe. Oh, you know what I don't have are my um, my little my little numpad keyboard here. So this is a really useful thing if you are working um, on Blender with a laptop, or you know really for for any program, but anything where you need a, a numpad like this because these functions are really um, really important in Blender. So this is Bluetooth uh, enabled. So I can use that to uh, go through the different viewports and select uh, the home and everything. So what I'm going to do here is select all this stuff, delete. So now we have half a head. I'll take this mirror modifier. Kind of works. Let's just move that over a little bit. I think I might be creating some problems for myself here. So let's go back a little bit. Let's set up that mirror before the remesh. I think that will be a little bit cleaner. So this will just make sure that, uh, or ensure that this will be um, symmetrical. And then we can go into sculpting. Let's lock our view to this object. Yeah, I've, I've, I've also found it's a little bit easier to navigate around with the mouse. Um, the only thing I really use the, uh, the tablet for is, um, no oh shit. <laughs> uh, what happened here? underneath here. Ah, I see. So we lost our bottom face here. 
that's no big deal. Uh, we will just uh, let's hide this for a second. Go back to our wireframe view. Uh, this will happen sometimes. So if you ever get anything weird with that that remesh, usually there's um, a face that isn't fully closed. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit F, and now we can see that is closed up there. So let's go back into sculpting. Uh, anyway, yeah, I, I think the basically the only thing I use the um, the pen for is is sculpting like this. Okay, sweet. So now we can see uh, everything is looking a little bit more whole. Uh, let's actually let's go a little bit maybe point. 07. Let's try that. A little bit more high resolution. And let's turn on our Y symmetry. And make sure once again that our tablet is connected. Um, been really loving using this. Uh, this Wacom, by the way, the Intu I have the Intuos Pro Medium, and the Bluetooth works great, only sometimes it will um, shut off, I think, to, to save battery or something. So, anyway, I can go in here and start to, I'm holding down Shift, just to kind of smooth things out. And I think this is actually, maybe maybe I kind of did follow the right... Uh, order of operations here because by sort of modeling it out first uh, I think I just ensured that I wasn't stretching out any of the the polygons too much so now I can kind of be sure that um, I should probably bring up a, a bird reference here shouldn't I all right let's see what I've got under references uh, animals, birds, awesome, look at that, it's pretty much what I want, I, I still do need to, to build up my reference library a little bit more, that's all I have for birds, um, which is kind of sad, I think this was for a very specific project, so. So let's, let's keep this guy up. I mean, it's not quite the same pose. Maybe we should use this one instead. It's a little bit better. I just kind of want to make sure I'm getting the, the beak shape right and everything. Whoops. That's not the shortcut I wanted. Was it Shift Option H? There we go. All right, so we'll probably want to build out this back region a little bit more. Of course, this is not like the bird itself. This is more a, their sort of representation of the bird, the eagle, I should say. So we don't have to be super realistic and accurate here, and I think, I think Blender just crashed. Did it? No. Awesome. Whew. Close one. Um, so one thing I'm noticing here too is, uh, man, did it crash? Or is that my pen? Not sure why it keeps uh, disconnecting here. What's our battery like? Ninety-eight percent. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Anyway, uh, so you see, oh, it's gone again. All right, I'm just gonna plug this thing in. Of course, I never have uh, these problems, but 
as soon as I go on to a live stream, have these issues. This is another useful thing to have if you're working off your um, your laptop too. It's just a USB port uh, extender, so I can have my my mouse as well as um, my tablet hooked up into the same port. So this is uh, this old MacBooks only have two USB ports. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work for us. Oh, you know what? It, maybe it was. It was the uh, the microphone bumping against the uh, power button. That could have been it. Okay. So anyway, um, what I was saying was, you see how the the brush is all wide like that? Uh, I think something just hasn't been scaled properly. So we can just go to Control A, apply scale. And that should fix that. Perfect. So I don't have to go into too much detail here. Um, probably best if I don't spend too much time on this since we have a lot of other stuff to, to make for the scene. But you know, it's like I'm not I'm not like under any uh, pressure here to to sort of finish this up in a timely manner. I just kind of want to enjoy it. And I really do enjoy the sculpting process too. It's it's very cool. So I, I used to um, I used to do a lot of ceramic sculpting uh, with clay and you guys may have seen those uh, those ceramic dragons I, I created. Um, that was such a fun process. I love working with clay so much. Uh, and I would like to, I would love to be able to do that more, but um, fortunately it requires a pretty, pretty expansive uh, studio space, you know, and like this, this stuff, it, it just requires so many, so, so little space. I mean, I can just set this up anywhere I want, uh, in a library or a coffee shop or wherever, um, and just start, just start working like this. So it really, um, you really can't can't beat 3D sculpting in terms of uh, convenience, I guess. Try to get that nice uh, crest there that eagles have, and then they have this dark kind of, or this sort of bone overshadowing the eye here, which is really cool. But once again, I don't need to make this like super realistic because obviously this is some, this is not an actual eagle. Although if I wanted to, I could use this for a model later on. Um, but for now, this is just kind of that, that statue they have top of their, their fortress. Hey, Sahiro. Welcome. Uh, yeah, we have not... <laughs> we haven't gotten too far here. I've just been kind of sculpting out some some stuff. Uh, this is this is the scene we're going to be working on here. Um, just a little sketch I did. I want to make this kind of eagle fortress thing for the uh, for the art station challenge. All right, so that's that's pretty good. Um, we don't have to go too crazy here and we don't even, we don't have to, uh, scale up the resolution anymore really either. 
since we're going to be viewing this from so far away, we, we don't want to we don't want to use up too many of our, our polygons here, especially since um, we're working on working with ancient technology here. Well, not exactly ancient, but this is not new either. Well, um, yeah, I would love to be to get into like three D printing as well with some of this stuff. Cause I actually went to a library the other day and they had a three D printer there. I'm not sure if it was something that you could just use or or what, but that was pretty cool. Um, I should have asked. Hey Sabrina, welcome. Well, we almost have our full uh, full crew from the uh, the group mentorship session last. Uh, what was that? F March, February, something like that. It's been a while. I'm gonna have to um, do another one of those soon. Once I kind of wrap up some some other stuff I'm working on at the moment. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Yes, doing a little bit of uh, sculpting here. Um, so I, I'm working on this this piece here. This is sort of the sketch we're, we're working from. Um, and I'm creating the, the head on the top there. So this is probably good enough for now. Maybe actually we can just fill out this a little bit more. Get it looking kind of feathery. And um, maybe subtract some of this stuff here. Cool, all right, you know, maybe we can return to this later if we need to do any more details, but we can actually use this. See, I, I've used, I've created multiple instances of this object uh, around on the other tower so we can actually use this a few times in our scene and like I said we could even use it for <coughs> if we wanted to actually model out all the individual birds which I probably won't because that's probably would be something that's a little easier to do in like ZBrush or something but I really want to learn that as well I I messed around with it a few years ago um, but it's I think it was just a free trial uh, it just wasn't in the in the budget at the time uh, to get the full subscription. I think it's like $100 or something. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to do too much uh, detailing here. Uh, absolutely, yeah, because it's, um, we're going to be viewing it from a distance anyway, so. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go back to our layout. And I have another cylinder here that was forming the base. And let's return to our normal view. Bring this guy back down. I kind of want to stretch it out a little bit. So let's actually, you know, it's it's never too early to um, to set up the the camera, figure out where we want to have our shot. So let's go into our camera view, and um, let's lock the camera to view, and find and let's set up that exact shot because we already know where we want to want to see this from and it's probably going to be sort of a wide uh, wide field of view so we 
can reduce the focal length a bit. And actually this is going to be sort of up on top of a hill here, so we can zoom out a little bit like that. Uh, so that's you know roughly where where it's gonna be. And now we can exit our camera view. And I think maybe so it looks like I've kind of created sort of a, a cylindrical wall. Uh, so here is asking, can doing Blender help us in understanding 3D forms better? Uh, yes, absolutely. I have found, since I've started working with Blender, I've I've gotten a real appreciation for 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 3D space. I mean, even like my sketches like this, um, it's a little bit easier for me to um, to to imagine the the space because I'm always kind of thinking about you know where my camera is set up here, um, and you sort of gain an appreciation for like different uh, levels of, of uh, focal length, you know, in wider and narrower field, fields of view. Um, it also reminds me of um, the artist uh, Ron, Ron Gia, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And he did a talk uh, that I was watching on ArtStation and he just did, he like, he pretty much started with 3D. He was working in uh, 3D for years and years and years and he got really good at it and then he sort of transitioned over to digital painting and if you look at his paintings there's just such an incredibly uh accurate sense of space and and depth even though a lot of it is has like this really uh can have like this really loose brushwork to it um there's like some really incredible perspective there and somebody was asking him in that talk uh, the same question he was like yeah basically uh you know i worked with, with 3d for so many years um, I almost like didn't need to study perspective at that point. It just sort of it comes naturally to you. So, um, you know, this stuff isn't just useful to, to create, uh, you know, cre to create things to literally import into your scenes. It's also, um, you know, uh, like I said, it's, it's going to help you kind of develop those skills a little bit as well. Uh, so let's, let's see, let's create Let's put our 3D cursor back. In the middle. Um, we do not need to be in camera view. So let's create a, um, I was doing this for this other, um, I mean, I can show you real quick. Actually, this is something I was working on last week. Uh, not this. Um, so I, I used a similar process. This is actually another shot of what I was doing during the modeling process. Um, I created this, this wall here in the same way that I, I'm going to in a minute. Um, and this was, this was super fun. This took me sort of the better part of a day. And I already had kind of the, the mountains and atmosphere set up, but um, that was really... Uh, really fun process. So let's let's do the same thing here. And uh, I think what I did was created a cylinder. And actually, let's do that again. But um, so you're gonna have to move this. So when we create a new object here, we can determine the radius and the number of vertices. So the mistake I made with the other one is I started it with too few vertices and when I expanded it out, actually it sort of looked uh, kind of choppy, you know? So I'm just gonna make sure depth gonna be a little bit taller here. Let's just bring this all the way out increase our vertices alright that's probably a good starting point let's bring this back here 
And um, maybe we can make this a little bit taller. So now we can go in here, we can take this top face, and I can't remember what the shortcut is, but we can go to inset face. And then bring that down. Sorry, we'll go to extrude. Is one way to do it. I guess I could have also actually no. What I did last time was maybe I made a torus and then I did something with that. But anyway, this is another way you can do that. Um, and I could shade that cylinder smooth. I'm probably going to go back in and do some more stuff with this. Uh, as well, but let's, let's move this guy out here. And how did I have it? I think this was a little bit. Let's look here. Ah, I see my my view has changed a little bit. So let's go back. Um, let's increase this size. How big is that inside of the walls? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, could probably figure out here what's the, uh, Item scale dimensions forty meters, so it's about right. Um, what can I do here? I actually want to duplicate this. Then rotate ninety. Whoops. Rotate Z ninety. There we go. So I'm creating the other ones on the, on the ends now. And I'm actually going to, uh, let's try this. Uh, let's move this back to uh, zero. I don't know where that weird character is coming from. We can just go back. Okay, so actually what I want to do is go into edit mode. Actually, let's just join these together. Mm, I don't know if I want to do that yet, actually. So you have to think kind of very carefully about how you proceed because if you make the wrong decision here, um, could really screw yourself over later, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I'm just going to join these. Maybe I'll just duplicate it. Actually, okay. Join these, and I'll go into edit mode and move these over as I did before, but keeping the object in the center.
And now we can um, reduce the size again. Now for this object, we can create a mirror modifier. And now anything we edit on one side will appear on the other side as well. All right, so we can't quite see that um, from this angle. I would like to see that other one there like, like we've had it set up. So it looks like, yeah, the way I've sketched it, they're a little bit forward. So, ah, here's what I'll do. I'll duplicate this and then rotate it, let's say, well, it's half of 45, um, 22.5. All right, so let's rotate along the Z, 22.5. And then let's do the same thing, except minus 22.5. Not quite far enough. Okay, so we want to divide it into sixths. Here's what we, we have to do a little bit of math here. Um, oh God. You know, I might just eyeball it. I'm sure there's a more technical way to do this, but. Trying to get it so they are roughly equidistant here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can you can do things uh, here where you can get very exact with stuff like that. Um, but for now, I'm I'm not going to uh, to worry about it too much. All right, so what we haven't done yet is created those sort of wing objects there. So I'm going to, I'm gonna do that now. Uh, might as well start with a cube. And we can do the same thing here. We can go into edit, move this over, and then add a mirror modifier long y. So now we can sort of create a, a pair of wings here. Don't look much like wings yet, but they will they will get there. I can actually move this. We can see how they're looking. Let's see. Uh, do you screw up if you if you forget doing Control S after every fifteen minutes? Um, Blender is pretty forgiving about that. Uh, it will auto save periodically, automatically by default. Um, and I haven't had any issues with that. There have been a couple times where for some reason the auto save did not uh, pan out and uh, I've lost some stuff. So obviously saving manually is, um, is a good way to go. So I'm just, just gonna do that now. Let's call this Eagles Roost. Uh, actually, I should stay organized and put that in my project files folder. Okay. So now let's go back to this. And let's see if we can replicate that shape. I want to keep it really simple. Um, but maybe what I will do is let's sort of start with... Uh, 
uh, start with sort of offsetting these edges here. And we can go into wireframe to make sure we select all the right ones. Uh, and then what else here? All right, now we can probably subdivide this. Maybe two cuts. Okay. And then I can hear my uh, computer heating up as we speak, even though we haven't even gotten into rendering or anything yet, but uh, she's struggling just a little bit. Let's go back into wireframe so we can see what we're doing. kind of cool. I mean, it's um, sort of a more of a abstract design. Um, but it's, you know, kind of something that you would expect to see uh, as a architectural design. It's looking like these are sort of clashing a little bit here. So can just bring that in a little bit like that. Let's see how everything's lining up on the side. Looks perfect. Let's see how it looks from our camera. Look at that. We're getting pretty close. Um, staying pretty true to the original vision with one exception is I think maybe we want a um, smaller focal length you know I really want to get that exaggerated perspective here I guess we're just still a little bit too low to the ground Maybe we should create the hill now that, that everything is sitting on top of so we have some some context. Uh, so let's unlock that. Go back to our view here. Let's actually just take everything and shift it up. Uh-oh. Something is weird here. What is that? Um, I don't know. Some kind of, sometimes Blender will like randomly duplicate certain things. I, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I guess it's not a problem yet. Anyway, let's go back here and, right, we were gonna make that hill. So 
let's start with a, a plane. Um, subdivide it. An errant polygon. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I don't know what what's going on there. Hopefully, it's those like little things like that where you're like, oh, that's fine, and then you know later on, it'll come back to bite you in the ass when you're doing a remesh or something, and it looks all messed up. But um, not too worried about it for now. So let's let's make a sort of a hill here. Let's just grab some some stuff. Actually, we can just grab a little section in the middle. Use this and hit G. Increase the what do you call that? I'm not sure. The um, Proportional editing. Look at that. It's a nice little hill. Move it over a little bit. It's got a nice flat top too. That worked out really well. Let's see if our camera is still in view. Yeah, it's looking awesome. Hey Jose, <laughs> what's happening? Right, now we've got pretty much the uh, the OG crew here, except uh, Noviera, missing a few others, but you know, I, I didn't give much notice for this. I just I saw an opportunity. I'm staying at a place with with some nice uh, Wi-Fi here, so I thought I'd um, thought I'd do a stream. Um, so now we can, you know, the, obviously this looks sort of pretty. Um, pretty uh, synthetic, you know, it's very symmetrical. So we can add a little bit of a displacement modifier here. There we go. That's a little bit, a little bit more off. Um, and then we can just go back into. Oh, let's apply that first. We can go back into edit and sort of make, make a few adjustments here. Of course, we're not going to be seeing the top of this, so it doesn't really matter. But you know, if we ever want to, to grab a different, you know, angle or something like that, it's really useful to just be thinking about the, the whole scene. All right, let's look back at our view here, pull up our reference, getting pretty close. Um, I think I just want to kind of sculpt things out a little bit closer to my original intention here.
start creating the uh, beginnings of that path as well. Let's go back. I'm actually going to zoom out from the camera a little bit. I think my mouse may be running out of batteries here as well. That would be kind of a shame. There's also a bit of a tilt um, with the way I've set things up here, and maybe. Yeah, I think, oh god, my mouse is running out. Um, it's okay. Actually, there's another one here I can use. Maybe I will try to connect that. Not really sure how. No idea. Well, no dragons, I think, in this one. Uh, so I'm doing the um, this art station challenge, or at least I'm starting it. I don't know if I'm going to finish it, but um, so the theme is uh, when animals ruled the world. So um, uh, I'm going to have a bunch of this is like an eagle fortress kind of thing. I think maybe what we're missing here is a little bit of scale, so let's... I don't want to stretch things out too much, but... Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's a little bit closer. Um, sort of running out of space with this landscape here, so I may just stretch it out a bit. Move this back. I'm actually just using the um, the pen now because my mouse sort of gave up. Seems to be working okay. All right, I changed changed the landscape a little bit. So let's zoom out. Now I don't know how to uh, change the proportional editing size without my mouse, so I'm just going to do that. There we go. And then all this stuff over here, I think we can take that down. Oh no, I've, I'm making some weird, some weird folds here. It's because I'm not doing it from the right angle. All right, it's a little bit closer. 
And I think we just want to get rid of this hill on the right side here, so see where our camera is. We could just take that down. Nice. It's a little bit better. So we can imagine where our, our stairs are going to go here. And then I'm just I'm going to take this down so we can see. Same over here. Cool. Um, let's. Um, I kind of want to see what this looks like with a little bit of lighting on it. So let's uh, really try to destroy my computer here and um, let's do a bit of uh, rendering. Let's go into cycles. And I don't have a light source, or at least. It's now buried, so I'm going to delete that. Let's add a sun and increase the strength. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. It's bright. Uh, let's turn on denoising because that's how I like to, to see things here. save in case it crashes. This is where it gets really fun. Hello, uh, Messi. Hope I pronounced that right. I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome. All right, let's actually go hop back to Eevee for a second so we can test out some, some lighting. Let's rotate our sun. Now, I did not do any value sketching in our sketch here, so let's um, let's hop back to our camera. We can actually sort of um, can rotate things and see how different um, different angles are are going to work here. That's kind of cool. Um, but this is where we want to start thinking about. Uh, about our values as well and our shapes how things are going to come together and also kind of, you know what kind of mood we want to set here um, let's let's leave it there for now and also we don't have a, a sky texture at all at this point so I'm actually going to Let's go shift control A, always on top disabled. And let's go into our shader editor here. And go to world. And I guess we could for now, we could just do like some kind of bluish thing. We don't have to put in a full HDRI yet, but you know, let's do it. Um, so let's create a environment texture, color to surface. Uh, let's see what we got here. HDRI. Let's try that. I can see from our camera, that looks pretty cool. Um, of course, these aren't going to be white. So let's, um, 
let's change the, the this texture as well. Doesn't have to be anything crazy for now, but um, let's hit home. Oh, let's hit new and hit home. And then I probably have something we can use here. Let's do um, I have Node Wrangler on, so I think it's Shift Control T and go to textures. Let's try that. I don't know if that worked. Let's try it again. There it is. Uh, so we don't have a UV map for this yet. So let's um, let's make one of those real quick. We can just do a smart UV project for now. And can probably reduce the scale here a bit or increase it. Let's go to three for everything. And this is still an EV, obviously, but let's let's see what happens when we um, just to kind of see how things are shaping up here. Let's apply the same material. I guess maybe we have to do it one by one. Looks pretty cool. Um, but right, so we're still in EV. Let's see what it, what it looks like in cycles. I'm glad to hear that, Ernesto. Uh, <laughs> that that at least I'm appearing to make some progress here. So here's our shot. That's starting to look really cool. Um, you know, it's it's just a start. But um, so, what can we do here? Uh, well, first, let's let's see what happens when we turn on displacement for this material. It's gonna make everything super messed up. And what happened? Oh, I think, okay, here we go. <laughs> awesome. It's just completely buried the camera. So let's go to our displacement node and reduce our scale. All right, so that's a little bit more reasonable but as we can see here the the textures for um, all this stuff is still it's not uh, mapped correctly if I can get out of this spot here come on here we go right so Let's do a cylinder projection for this. And 
for these. also do a cylinder projection and for this uh, what the hell let's do another cylinder projection see what happens let's look at it again All right, so looks like the scale got all whack here. Um, but we're getting closer. So let's actually separate out this material. Nick, are you going to uh, take the... Um, the 3D uh, for Artist course with us. So I know uh, learning through that was, um, I mean, I, I pretty much have learned everything I, I know through that. Uh, all right, so this UV map is not working. Let's just try a smart UV project. Let's do the same. Oh, I didn't do this one either, did I? See, there's like another another set of of uh, polygons there. Not sure what they're doing, but whatever. We'll uh, we'll worry about that when it starts making problems for us. Okay, let's do another smart project. Uh, here we go. And for this one as well. I don't think we did that before. All right, let's check it out. And I don't even know if this is the, the texture we're gonna use, but it will be helpful to have these UV maps available to us. All right, so this one is the scaled down version. Oh, and I haven't done the uh, cylinder as well. Or the wall. So let's go to UV editing. Once again, smart UV seems to be the way to go. All right. Oh yeah, uh, that would be sweet if you could get your work to pay for it. Um, yeah, I know for some people, like their you know schools or colleges will do that as well. Um, all right, so let's switch this one to material two, and this one as well. I guess I should be naming these, but I'm we're, we're not going to be working with too many different textures here. This is just sort of a preview. Um, all right, that's pretty cool. Let's bring up our, I'm gonna save this actually. Let's bring our, our pure ref back up. So there's some other things. Um, I really want to continue to increase this focal length. I know it's already kind of extreme, but um, I guess it's not so extreme. Let's try 20. And then 
we can zoom in a little bit. I would just really want to get like a really big uh, sense of scale here. Let's try 15. And there's also a little bit of a a tilt in the camera angle that I that I set up here, so maybe we can do that as well. I mean, I'm really trying to be faithful to my sketch here. Um, of course, you don't have to be, but I just really like what I set up there in terms of the the composition and everything. So um, let's just go back to our this view actually, and. Um, Maybe we can rotate it like that. Okay, maybe we can go back to 18. All right, so that's like pretty close. Um, actually, let's rotate it just a little bit back. Now we have some other things we can throw in here as well. Uh, such as some rocks. So let's do a quick, uh, quick rock thing here. Okay, that's happening. Home. There we are. Uh, let's just set our 3D cursor right here. There we go. Still using my, my pen here. I'm not quite used to. Uh, all right, we can lock our view to 3D cursor. Perfect. All right, so let's just... Create some kind of thing here. We can go ahead and subdivide uh, a couple times here. Oh. Drop my pen. God, how long have I been doing this now? Started at noon. I guess it hasn't been that long. I'm just not used to doing the, the two hour streams anymore. All right, just going to reel this in a little bit. something vaguely rock-like. I wonder if I can do this. Ah, yeah. Awesome. All right, that's a pretty good, pretty good start. I guess it still has some corners on it, but uh, let's bring these out.
Cool. We have a rock. Now let's uh, let's move this. Where's our camera? Here it is. Let's put this right in frame where I wanted it. Not seeing it yet. There it is. Uh, all right, just where we wanted it. And we can um, duplicate that as well. here squash it down a little bit I guess I should probably sculpt these out before I start duplicating them everywhere but So we can make some steps. Actually, have not attempted that before, but imagine it's not too complex. I'm sure there's a really efficient way to do it. But actually, let's let's first let's see how this looks with the the lighting. Ah, uh, yes. These are not officially rocks yet. It would be cool to have the sun casting a bit of a shadow here. So let's actually um, let's go back into EV. Let's rotate our sun. Maybe something a little more like that. Cool, I'm liking it. Um, I guess this can go down a little bit. We'll save that spot for our bird. And um, Let's, uh, let's make some steps. Let's try a cube. 
we can probably make a few different types here. Ah, Jurgen, that's who we were missing. Welcome. Uh, just doing some cool stuff in Blender here. Uh, setting up this scene that you, you can see in the, the sketch below. This thing keeps getting in my way here. Let's subdivide this a few times. We can just make it look a little bit irregular. Sort of like it's not, uh, it's a little bit worn, you know. Let's just turn off proportional editing. making a step right now by the way yes it's very next level um, all right so what am I doing here oh yeah I want to first let's just set that I think there's a way to to set the materials for multiple objects but for some reason it's not really working well for me so um, I'm just gonna create another variation of this really quickly kinda switch it up a little bit Let's do one more that's maybe a little bit a little bit narrower. We could actually just you know flip it around. 180. And then do some other stuff over here. Alright, so now we have like three different types of steps we can use um, and that will just create a little bit of a little bit of variation and once again I'm sure there's a more efficient way to go about this but This is how I'm doing it. Uh, actually, before I start rotating these, let's just take this, duplicate it. Whoops, I don't know what just happened. Okay, can join these. We can use this as a segment. Um, we can duplicate this again, and then I wonder if we can flip it horizontally. I'm sure there's a way to do that. 
Uh, if anyone knows, shout it out. I guess what I could do is I could flip it x 180 and then rotate it around. It's kind of different. It's not really exactly what we're going for, but you know, we just want to create enough sort of natural variation here that it's not going to look super weird um, but anyway let's let's take all this stuff let's bring it down where we need it and it's probably way too large scale at the moment so let's shrink it down let's get on the level of our camera here There we go. Close. So let's try taking this segment here, or these two. Rotate them. Nice. Look at that. Pretty much exactly where we need them. Um, let's just duplicate this again. Rotate. And we can rotate them like this too. You know, these don't have to be super uh, perfect. Just have to give us the impression that it's, it's just to give another dimension to the art. Um, I don't know, you know, I just, I've really been enjoying working in, in Blender. Um, and it's been really cool to see, you know, what kind of stuff we can, we can create. So this, like everything I'm creating now is pretty much you know, an experiment. Um, but so let's, let's take these. Actually, let's duplicate them again. Over here, we can create sort of a, a rotating, or more of a curved step set. And we can use this to sort of uh, so let's join these together. We can use this to make transitions I'm, I'm just realizing now how much time this could potentially take but we'll see it'll be worth it and you know we can sculpt we don't just have to keep building around the landscape here we can start sculpting the um, sculpting things to to work with us a little bit more sort of carve a path for our stairs. Although it does look like in our, right, okay. So this is kind of where, where our stairs are going. I'm, once again, I'm trying to be very faithful to, um, to our original vision here.
but we are sort of overcomplicating things here, I think. Um, I think also I'm just not getting the scale that I was looking for, but whatever. Um, and we could always shrink these down a little bit. That works. This one, that looks like an extra. Uh, let's use it. Um, this is not the right segment. Okay, let's put this aside for a second here. I'm sure you guys are finding this very fascinating. This is like the most tedious thing I've done so far. Um, what we do need to do... Um, hey, what's the deal with the evident platform switch? Yeah, so uh, they're working on a really cool new thing. It's, um, it's just a expansion or it's a it's a new um I, I i shouldn't say too much about it here but it's basically a much more sleek uh way to uh to go through courses there um and uh so that's uh that's going to be something that's that's being rolled out uh pretty soon so you know keep an eye out for that it's i've, I've tried it out it's really sweet um it's much more much more user friendly really fast really responsive um really uh really easy to navigate through things really sleek it's kind of like um it's like netflix for taking online courses i guess um so uh definitely uh definitely keep an eye out for that because that's going to be a, a game changer as far as how things go there all right so duplicate that this is now our right curving segment And we can move our landscape out of the way to make room for that. This one should probably be a straight segment, so let's bring that right there. See how this is looking. Well, it's looking like a bunch of floating steps, but you can see here, uh, it's starting to, to form. So let's um, let's keep going with this. Only a uh, hundred more steps to go. What I will probably do is just take this whole section here and duplicate it again to save myself some some time. Uh, Okay, so let's take this, duplicate, let's just join this together. This is pretty cool actually. That looks really, um, even, even just the models themselves, you know, it's starting to look kind of, kind of realistic, kind of organic. So now that we have this as a single model, actually, as well, we could go into edit mode here. This is probably super risky, but let's see if it works. We can start 
unfortunately editing things here. Look at that. It's like a big snake or something. This is cool. I did not expect to be doing this, but let's reduce that just a little bit. And you know, they don't all have to be visible. It can kind of look like it's it's all overgrown or right up right up to the doorstep there of course it makes these kind of imperfect um, let's see how this looks all right yeah so we just have to we have to kind of switch things up a little bit here I mean, we could raise up the the land to meet everything, but um, now these are getting very, very out of whack. I don't know if this is all going <laughs> to, I don't know how this is going to look, but... Um, here, let's move this out of the way. I don't want to... <laughs> you know, you're totally right. Um, so the stairs, I figured this out already, don't worry. The stairs are not for the eagles. They are for the humans to bring sacrifices to the eagles. Um... So don't worry too much about whether or not the eagles can use the stairs uh, because they don't need to. All right, what does that look like? It's kind of cool. We're still not like seeing the the tops of things there, and it's you know the 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 composition is ending up a little bit differently. I guess I would like to see things winding over a little bit more towards here. Let's just see what happens if we grab everything here and we join it. Let me just move everything like that. You can do the same thing over here in theory. Maybe not. It's getting very, uh, very messy. But it might work.
<laughs> stairs for the pizza delivery guy. Exactly. All right, so that's a little bit, a little bit closer to what we're looking for. Now it's another question entirely if, if that's gonna look cool, with those stairs all messed up like that. But, um, we'll see. So let's just. I'm gonna keep these on the side. In case I need them. And then let's look at our viewport again and we get to see our, our moment of truth here. All right. Um, could use some work, but we're getting there. Let's move these out of the way a little bit. Um, it would probably help if we had a different material here for the ground. So let's. Um... And of course, none of this stuff is like subdivided and properly textured or anything yet. So I'm. Um, I'm just kind of trying to to, to uh, preview things. All right. So let's try yeah, Control Shift T. Let's do. Actually, that looks kind of cool. It could be like a snowy um, thing. But for now, just so we can see. Clearly, let's try some kind of grass here. I do. Let's try that. All right, looks pretty weird. So let's just, let's try five here. Cool. I mean, it's uh, it's shaping up. It's gonna need a lot of work here. Um, but I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep working on this. I gotta take a break now, so I'm probably gonna gonna cut off this stream. But um, this is this is looking pretty cool. You know, we can start to create some some atmosphere, and of course, you know, we can work on these these textures a lot, and you know, get everything looking a bit better in that respect um, but we're, we're kind of off to a off to a good start and if we wanted to you know we could just start painting off of this um, I'm seeing some potential problems with the values here you know we've got like sort of light against light here with the head um, but you know let's let's kind of look around here and see what this is looking like from from some different angles it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it looks like we kind of really stretched out some of those stairs. Uh, so they don't look so good from this angle. But, you know, if we want to, we can still... Um, copy and paste sections of that one below we could probably and we have those backups around there as well we could recreate uh, those stairs and maybe do a little bit of a better job um, but it looks pretty pretty epic so far um, let's let's zoom in and see what this uh, this eagle head looks like Huh. 
Looks pretty cool. Um, you know, e and even like this, this is just a cylinder. I haven't done anything to it yet. And like these wings, I haven't really sculpted them out or anything. All of this is still pretty uh, polygonal. Um, but looks pretty cool. Let's go back to our original view here. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to wrap it up for for this stream. So I, I thank you guys for for joining me. It's nice to see the the uh, uh, original crew showing up for this. And um, how much should I practice from zero to be at this level? Um, well, I, you know, I, I've only been I've been learning Blender for a few months now maybe a little more um but you know i've been learning from wallet uh and you know once again i i do recommend you guys check out that course um and you know his other free resources on youtube as well um and of course you know there's there are plenty of other people you can check out on youtube to learn this stuff but um you know that's that that's that's where i learned this from so um you know uh now now is your chance if you want to hop on that train um but anyway, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on this on on my own, and uh, maybe we can sort of continue into. I'm gonna keep working on the the render, but um, maybe we can go into a part two next week. I can't promise I'm going to be anywhere uh, specifically that has good enough Wi-Fi to do a stream like this again. But um, you know, I will I will keep uh, keep you all posted in the Discord group, and um, which I I will post a link in the description of this video too if you haven't joined that yet. Um, that's where we just kind of talk about art and um, uh, share artwork and give each other feedback and you know talk about stuff like this um, and of course you know if you're just seeing this for the first time uh, please subscribe to the channel and that's about it for me today so hope you all have a, a great Sunday and I will catch you soon hopefully all right I'll see you later